Okay, so we are just going to practice naming simple binary ionic compounds and also a few that have a polyatomic ion. So hopefully you watched the video from Tyler DeWitt about what a polyatomic ion is. Okay, and let me just go through this, all right, and then we'll practice with that. So this is a flow chart all about naming compounds. And so I'm going to post this on Schoology. I don't have a hard copy for you, so you can either print it out or uh, just look at it. And it just kind of is going to help you sort out all the different types of compounds that we are going to learn how to name. Okay, so first things first, you have got to start with a compound. So just a reminder, a compound is a substance that has two or more different elements. Okay, so you have a compound and you got to figure out which of these paths you're going to take to figure out the name. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is ionic. All right, and we started this on Wednesday. The simplest kind of ionic is a metal plus a non-metal, and we did that on Wednesday. All right, and then today we are going to go down here and practice some more with the binary. Okay, so here's the rules. Some of these you've done already. Um, for naming a binary ion a compound, you name the metal, you name the non-metal, and if you have a just a single non-metal element, you change the ending to IDE. Okay, so that would be an example. That one would be sodium chloride. <clears throat> All right, but today we are also going to name ionic compounds that have a polyatomic ion. And when you do those, which we'll practice, you don't change the ending, you just say the name of it. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside uh, for the moment, all right, and we might look back at that later. All right, so you are gonna need to take out your periodic table. Uh, hopefully you have it, or if you don't, you can use the one that's posted on Schoology. I would definitely recommend that you use the Adina High School version of the periodic table because, you know, Periodic tables have some different, different stuff on, on them, and on the back of this one is what we're going to use. Okay, so uh, we are going to practice, but before I do that, turn over your periodic table to the back. All right, table F on the back is where these polyatomic ions are listed. All right, so that is why you should use our version of this because other schools have different lists or what's on the internet might not be the same list okay but basically you're going to start to practice looking on the back here for the name of whatever ion is in your formula okay so for example c2h3o2 with a minus one charge is called acetate so if you see c2h3o2 in a formula you would use the word acetate. Okay, you don't change the ending, you just call it acetate. And we're gonna do this in one second. So this whole list are negatively charged polyatomic ions, in other words, anions. There's also a little section here with just a few positively charged polyatomic ions called cations, okay? So we will have to look at this section or this section, depending on what we're doing. All right, so let's just practice. Okay, so these problems here are from your homework packet. You don't have to have a hard copy of your homework packet right now. You can write these down on a piece of paper, um, but I just took them off of this section of your homework packet. So you can either write them on your homework packet. I'm giving you some answers here, basically. So you can write them on there, or you can write them on a piece of paper, or whatever. But I do want you to practice, because that's the best way to learn something. Okay, so let's name these. All right, the first one is CaF2. All right, so remember, these things are always binary. There's always two parts. All right, so Ca is calcium right here. So that's the metal. And F is fluorine, and that's the nonmetal. So this is the simplest kind. Uh, this is the positive side, happens to be a plus two, fluorine is a minus one, uh, but we have a metal and a non-metal. Okay, so for these rules, you say the name of the metal, calcium, and you change the ending of fluorine to fluoride. All right, and that is the name of that thing. Okay, let's do the next one. And if you want to pause and name it yourself, and then come back, you can see if you got it right. All right, so aluminum is my metal. 
Fluorine, again, is my non-metal. All right, let's find aluminum here. All right, here's aluminum. You don't really need to worry about the chart, but I'll just tell you it's a plus three, and fluorine, again, is a minus one. Okay, it's binary, and there's just two elements. So I'm just going to call that aluminum fluoride. All right, this is the positive side. This is the negative side. Okay, this is a plus three. Fluorine is a minus one, and I have three of them. So I'm just going to write it like that. You don't have to write that down. I'm just showing you. Okay, but the name of that is aluminum fluoride. All right, let's do number nine. Li3PO4. All right, so remember, again, these are binary. There's only two parts, a positive part and a negative part. So I have a phos, a P, and, an, and four O's. I have a lithium, a P, and four O's. So that looks like three things. So that is your hint that you need to look on the back for a polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ion, because you're never going to have three things. You're only ever going to have two. All right, and this is lithium, and there's three of them. That's my metal. All right, and this is my negatively charged polyatomic ion. So Li is lithium. Okay, it's right here, right there, and it has a plus one charge. Okay, and then we got to look on the back because PO4 is two different elements together. All right, so let's turn our periodic table over. All right, now you got to just kind of scan down here till you find the formula PO4. Here it is, and it has a minus three charge, and its name is phosphate. All right, so all we do is we call it lithium phosphate, and that is the name. So let me show you this again on the rules. When you're naming something, it's a polyatomic ion, you don't change the ending. You just leave it. You just say it like it is, phosphate. All right, and just for fun, I'll tell you that has a minus three charge, and lithium has a plus one, and I have three of them. So I'm just going to write that down. But the name of that is lithium phosphate. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to do a few more, okay? All right, BaCO3. It's binary. I know that barium is my metal. Barium is right here. Okay, so that's my first part. Barium. All right, that's my metal. This has to be negative, but I have carbons and oxygens. So again, that is your hint that you need to look on the back. That is a polyatomic ion. Okay, we do not say barium carbon oxygen. All right, we got to turn it over and figure out the name of it. So we got to find CO3. So scan down here. Oh, here it is. Uh, and I think Tyler, our buddy Tyler, talked about carbonate. So CO3 with a minus two charge is called carbonate. So then the name of this is just going to be barium carbonate. That is the name. Okay. And then just for fun, barium has a charge of plus two. Carbonate has a charge of minus two. <clears throat> All right. They're ionic. They have ions and the ions have charges. All right. Let's do number 16. All right. This is a tricky one. It's not really tricky. All right. But I got a lot of elements in here. I have N, H, P, and O. But I have to always remember that these things are binary. So this has to be the first part, and I know it has to be positive. Positive comes first. And this is my negative part. And they must both be polyatomic ions, because this has Ns and Hs. This has Ps and Os. So let's find NH4 on the back. It's a polyatomic cation. So that is right here. This little section is the, po is the positively charged polyatomic ions. NH4 plus 1 is called ammonium. All right, so let's write down ammonium. Uh, ammonium. Sorry. And PO4 is phosphate again. Uh, ammonium phosphate. Okay, that is the name. All right, and this is a minus three, and ammonium is a plus one, and I have three of them, so I just like to make my little table. All right, awesome. I have a few more here for you to practice. 
And it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to just try these by yourselves before you watch me do it and see if you get the right answer. <clears throat> but I'm going to keep going, so you might have to pause the video. All right, here's BEI2. It's binary. All right, B is my metal. It's beryllium. It's right here. So beryllium. Beryllium. That's my metal. Iodine is my non-metal. So this is the simple kind. Where I got to change the ending of iodine to IDE. Beryllium happens to have a charge of plus two, which you can see right there. And iodine has a charge of minus one, and there's two of them. All right, and iodine is right here. And we change that to iodide. Beryllium iodide. You can hear my dog George barking. He just had a long walk. All right, let's do this one. NaC2H3O2. That's a lot of letters, okay? But remember, there's only two parts. Sodium is my metal, okay? So this must be a polyatomic ion. So that, again, is your clue. You gotta look on the back of your periodic table. So this is gonna be called sodium something. Okay, let's find that one on the back. All right, let's see here. It's right there, C2H3O2 minus one. The name of that is acetate. All right, so all we do is we call that sodium acetate this is acetate all right that is its name sodium is a plus one charge acetate's a minus one okay i got a couple more here for you because this is so fun all right mgso4 let's figure out the positive part and the negative part magnesium is my metal all right and it's right here all right, and SO4 is S's and O's. So I got to look on the back of the periodic table. That is a polyatomic ion. All right, SO4. Let's see if we can find it. All right, scanning, scanning. Uh, here it is. SO4, the minus two charge, is called sulfate. So this is going to be called magnesium sulfate. So you just say the name of the polyatomic ion. And then if we can just look at the charges for fun, magnesium is a plus two. That's the positive part of this ionic compound. And sulfate is a minus two. Okay. So you got to always have a positive part and a negative part. All right, let's do these last two. K2O. All right, potassium is my metal. Oxygen is a non-metal. So this is the simple kind, simple binary ionic. K is potassium. And then O is oxygen. And the name of oxygen gets changed to oxide. Okay, that's one of those weird exceptions. Okay, we don't call that oxygenide, we call it oxide. So the name of this would be potassium oxide. Okay, remember we don't say anything about the two in the name. All right, but let's look at the charges just because we're on it here. All right, so potassium has a plus one charge, and I have two of them. Okay, and oxygen has a minus two charge. All right, so we have a positive side and a negative side. All right, I got one more here. All right, SRNO32. Remembering that it's binary, I'm just going to figure out this must be the positive side, this must be the negative side. All right, so SR is a metal. It's right here. It's called strontium strontium and then NO3 has two different elements in there so it's got to be a polyatomic ion remember we don't call this strontium nitrogen oxygen we have to look on the back so NO3 scan down here 
Here it is. And these are kind of small, so sometimes you got to just look carefully. All right, that is called nitrate. Strontium nitrate is the name of that, okay? And this strontium has a plus two charge, which I know because here's strontium and it's got a plus two charge. And nitrate has a minus one charge and I have two of them. Okay, so this is the positive part and that's the negative part. All right, there'll be a few more practice ones for you to do as homework. Awesome.